In this video, I'm going to show you a colour grading technique that hopefully will open up further possibilities for your colour grading in Lightroom. I've pushed the edits too far with this, but it's just to let you see how the techniques can be employed. Let's dive right in. The colour grading panel that's been added to Lightroom and also Camera Raw makes so much difference to your images and when you go into it you have the highlights, the shadows and the mid-tones. For example, I could go in and warm up the highlights in this image then hold down shift and apply it throughout the image, just the subtle point that I want. You can also blend them and balance that out as well. And it's a very useful feature to use. So I saw this editing technique applied to portraiture edits, and I wanted to see how it would work with landscape edits. So I'm gonna show you here, and hopefully it'll spark your imagination and give you something to try as well. So basically what we do is we go into the radial filter, and as you know, if I draw the radial filter on here and I adjust the exposure, depending on whether it's inverted or not. If I invert that, it'll get darker in there and it'll get darker in there. But what we're going to do is we are going to just delete this and we're going to draw it off to the side. And we're going to take it there. If I press O on my keyboard, this now affects this entire image. And I'll just take off O in my keyboard. So if I want to darken the entire image down, I can darken it down. If I want to blow it out, I can blow it out. But what we're going to do is we're going to employ range masks with this as well. So if I go into my range mask and if I just work with luminance and we have the range of luminance here. So I'm just going to go between, for this example, 70 to 100 and I press O on my keyboard. So you can see how that's going to affect the image now. It is affecting it overall, but it's in certain areas, it's more dominant. If I take the smoothness down, it's going to be really dominant in the areas that are red. So I'm going to, for this example, leave it around the 50% mark. So anything I do here, and if I take that off and just click show luminance mask, you're going to see exactly where it is going to affect. More dominant effects here, smoother, more natural effects there. So I'm going to leave it at 50% for this, just for this video. Right, so what I can do now is I can employ every single one of these sliders into the highlights. So here we go, what I'll do is I'll just change the temperature of this and I'll just warm it up slightly. So let's go to 40. So you can see the difference there. Let's adjust the tint to around the same. I'm going to over exaggerate this so that you can see exactly what's happening. The shadows, for example, I'm not going to play with the highlights at all. Let's take the shadows down to about there. Uh, it is a foggy scene, but let's adjust the dehaze. So let's take the dehaze up. Let's go for around 23. Yep, that's looking fine. And let's push the saturation of that slightly. Let's go to around there. So you can see the difference in that already with that image. But that says only affecting the highlights and the luminance of the highlights. What we can then do is we can right click here, duplicate it, and you can see it's got a harder effect now. You can see that all over it. If I drag that down, I'm going to make this one the mid-tones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that back down to around, let's go for 27, 28, 29 to, let's go to 68 here. So we're going to affect the mid-tones. We can adjust these as well. That's the thing for that. And let's just reset all of these. So they're now reset, and we have the highlights here, the mid-tones here. So let's just duplicate that before I do anything else and make this the darks. So again, I'm going to take that down, or I'm seeing the darks, the shadows. I'm going to take that down from zero to about 27. So this one's here, lights, mid-tones, shadows. Let's go in and adjust the mid-tones here. 
And let's just drop the temperature slightly. So let's take it down to around about there. About there for the mid-tones. And let's adjust the tint of this. Again, I'm going to dial in some magenta. So let's go to around there. Not too much of a difference, but you can see where it is affecting throughout the entire image. And if I want to know where the mid-tones are affecting, I just click Show Luminance Mask. I can adjust it to make it more harsh by taking the smoothness down or pushing the smoothness up to 100, which will smooth it out throughout the entire image. For this, I'm just going to leave it at 50. So what we've done now is with minus nine, we've went 27 there. I'm going to turn the luminance mask off. Uh, let's play with something else. Let's go and adjust the hue for this one. Let's just dial in some of the hue and let's take the fine adjustment off. 2.5, let's go for that. I went for highlights, mid-tones and shadows. You could choose any one of these or a combination of two, three, or just one of them to get the effect you're after. You can also change this from a luminance range mask to a color range mask. Now this is going to have some effect on the image, as you can see, but I can dial that back, reset it, go in and choose a color. Let's choose there. And that takes it nearly back to what my original image was. So let's choose something else. Let's go in there. So you can see it's added more magenta through here and we've got a purple hue in there. I can then go in and I can dial that through. So we've got more control with the ranges within this. And in this case, it's the color. And I've just only taken a spot sample. I could have drawn through to get more. But as I say, this is just to give you an idea of what can be done. I can play with the saturation or I can drag the saturation back. So using this technique, it looks as if you can color grade subtly, not to the extremes that I have, and have slightly more control over your actual color grading in Lightroom. Same applies for the gradients as well. I could just drag a gradient across, make that my highlights, drag another one, make that my mid-tones, drag another one and make that my shadows. So I'll let you see the before and after for this. So that's what we started with and this is what we have now. So there is a massive difference and it's not something that you would apply as severely to your landscape images, but it just opens up your editing techniques as well. If I wanted to pinpoint one color, I could pinpoint one color with this. So I wondered where else this could be applied to, to create effects and shift color hues and everything with this. And as you can see, I'm not an astrophotographer, but I was down testing out the Nikon Z7 just at night and just at a local beach. And this was the result that I got straight out of camera. So what I decided to do with this was create my three. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to duplicate these each time just to make the process quicker. And we'll go in for the highlights and I'm going to turn the range mask on to luminance. And again, I'm going to take that roughly up to... I'll just show the luminance roughly to about there. Uh, 70 to 100, let's go into this one. Let's go for mid-tones. Again, luminance. I'm going to take that into mid-tones roughly about there. So I'm just watching. As you can see, I'm going to get some banding here, but that just allows you to see it. And again, for my shadows, put the luminance on. Take it down to about... 30. Now I'm splitting these up incrementally. You can adjust these any point if it's only certain areas that you want to affect. So remember that. I'm just doing this for the purposes of the video. So let's jump in to the highlights and I'll turn the luminance mask off. So straight away I can go in and I can adjust that a bit cooler, lighten it up so you can see the effect coming in with the image. But for this, what I can also do is I can play around with this. Now, for this, you don't really need to do what I've done here. You can just play with the range masks and the luminance in here, but it just allows you to see the color grading that you can do. I can also go in and change the color of it. And I can find a color that I'm quite happy with for this. So I'm going to leave that at that. I'm going to take some of the highlights down just to around there. I'm going to go in now to the 
mid-tones and we will just adjust these slightly just to see what's going to happen. So it's opening up the sky a bit more with the colour and the saturation here in the mid-tones. I'm going to leave it at that because you probably get the idea by now and I'm just going to get into the shadows here and I'm going to lift the exposure to the shadows slightly and we've opened up the sky even further here I'm going to lift the shadows slightly as well just to bring in some of the foreground and now I could apply another colour here if I wanted to or I could go in just for a hue shift and let's just play around with this but you can see the banding that's happening there straight away when I do that so again everything's subtle the other thing that you do have control of with this it can be applied to certain areas now what I'm going to do is not going to look right for this image but it's just to give you an idea we opened up the sky with the shadows and for example if I didn't want it in there I could go into the shadows, I could go into brush, erase, and I'm going to take the flow to about 64 and I'm just going to remove it from there slightly. Just to show you what happens, I'll just do that as well. So I can eat into this at whatever point I want. I can take it across there and drag it back, but I don't like that for this. But hopefully that lets you see everything that you can do. There is so much more. I can go in and dehaze and that will darken it down or I can take it like that. It's entirely up to you. Colour grading using these techniques may open up a whole new world of possibilities for you. Hopefully you got something from the video and hopefully it opens up new editing possibilities for you. It was really just to show you how it can be done not to produce a final image like the one you see in the screen that's just been overdone. But hopefully, as I say, it opens up new possibilities in the colour grading for you. Thanks again for watching. Remember, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.